The gentleman from Arizona, Mr. Biggs, is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. We all want to know the truth about what happened on January 6th, but we're not going to get there because the Democrats are having another hearing today that is designed to attack President Trump and his supporters, appease the Democrats' most radical left base, and try to influence the public with more misdirection. If you want the truth, stop lying. The lies he started even before January 6th, and they've continued through today. Democrats and their media accomplices claimed that Lafayette Park was cleared for President Trump to take a photo. That was a lie. Democrats and the media allies claimed Postmaster General DeJoy was going to steal the election for President Trump. That was a lie. Regarding January 6, Democrats claimed that Republican members of Congress aided rioters by providing capital tours in the days preceding January 6. That was a lie. Democrats claimed that Officer Sicknick was bludgeoned to death by Trump supporters. In fact, House impeachment managers explicitly referred to that in their pre-trial memorandum, quoting, the insurrectionists killed a Capitol Police officer by striking him in the head with a fire extinguisher, close quote. That, too, was a lie. Why is it so important for Democrats and the mainstream media to continue with a lie that Trump supporters committed violent acts, attacks, even after they had been totally debunked? Democrats and the media stuck with this lie, particularly with Officer Sicknick, because it was part of their narrative. In Judiciary Committee, just last week, one of my Democrat colleagues asked Director Ray if January 6th was an insurrection. Director Ray disputed that claim, quote, quell, uh, quote, well, Congressman, I certainly understand why you would describe it that way. In my role as FBI director, because that's a term that has legal meaning, I really have to be careful about word, using words like that, close quote. Well, a legal filing of armed insurrection allows the president to act with incredible power, even to the extent of suspending habeas corpus. But referring back to the pretrial memo of the House impeachment manners, managers, the overarching rationale for stretching the truth was to lay the table for the second impeachment of President Trump. According to Director Ray, most of the people who came to Washington on January 6th were peaceful. He reiterated that testimony today. Quote, first group, biggest number of people who showed up kind of outside, maybe not on the Capitol grounds, were peaceful, maybe rowdy, but peaceful protesters. Then there's a second group that were people who, for whatever reason, engaged in, let's say, the next level of criminal conduct, trespass, etc., and that is criminal. That's a violation, and it needs, those laws need to be enforced. And then there's the third group, which is where you're seeing a lot of the arrests and a lot of the more significant charges that are coming out of our work right now, which are the people who brought all sorts of weapons, you know, Kevlar and tactical vets, vests, close quote. And as he testified today, that was the, by far the smallest group. If my Democrat colleagues wish to find the truth, they must stop using inflammatory language and tell the truth about January 6th. They continue to claim that President Trump helped plan the riot with no evidence to support their claim. They ignore that 113 people charged with crimes came under the Trump administration before January 20th. They also claim that President Trump's speech incited the riot. But you can't have it both ways. President Trump's comments on January 6th could not have incited a riot and also planned the attack in advance. However, the evidence and common sense tells it's, it's neither. Last week, one of our Democrat colleagues compared January 6th to 9-11. Director Ray quickly disputed that claim, quote, First, let me just say that I don't think any attack, ransomware or January 6th, can fairly be compared to the horror of 9-11 and the 3,000 or so individuals who lost their lives that day, close quote. So Democrats continue to claim that a, a person, a protester, brought zip ties into the Capitol to bind and attack officials. But the assistant U.S. attorney prosecuting the case filed a statement with the court disputing this. The prosecutor revealed the zip block tie the zip tie lie. Defendants and the propagandists claim that this was an armed insurrection, but no guns were found, according to Assistant Director of FBI. Another lie debunked. And the DOJ also revealed a Democrat uh, uh, trope by saying, there is no direct evidence at this point of kill, capture teams, and assassinations. So as we get to this, this hearing is not in pursuit of the truth. It's a continuation of the lies, distortions, prevarications, and misdirection that we have heard from my Democrat colleagues for many months. If you want to get the truth, stop lying. And Madam Chair, I wish to uh, submit for the record the following um, news articles. 
One dated February 16th, the false and exaggerated claims still being spread about the Capitol riot. One dated March 5th, as the insurrection narrative crumbles, Democrats cling to it more desperately than ever. One dated March 14th, the January 6th insurrection that wasn't. And February 22nd, FBI sees congressional cell phone records related to the Capitol attack. And I yield so back. ordered. Thank you. Gentleman yields back. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. That is an absolute flat out lie. It is not our greatest threat. Not once in his speech today did Merrick Garland mention last summer's BLM riots or skyrocketing crime on our streets, the riots we still see week in and week out. How about Merrick Garland? You condemn this man on your screen, Justin Tyran Roberts, arrested for shooting five people in a 20 hour shooting spree in Georgia over the weekend. You know why he did it according to investigators? They insist he was intentionally targeting white military looking men. That sounds racially motivated to me. He didn't mention that. No mention of this black on white crime because it doesn't fit their divisive narrative. These are stories that are actually happening in America. How about we stop issuing fake warnings about crime based off of political agendas and start prosecuting all criminals, no matter what color they are? When you're up there, are you just getting tired of being told you're a racist, I'm a racist, everybody watching is a racist? Yeah. They have to talk about January 6th, and they have to talk about things that divide us on, uh, along racial grounds. It is, it is so wrong, but that's who the Democrats are today. They're this radical left-wing party, and they have nothing else positive to talk about, so they have to go here. Yeah. You know, you look at January 6th. Everybody has said it was a tragic day. It never should have yep. happened. They wanted people that were violent and destructive put away. But, you know, I was looking at Senator Ron Johnson. He looked at hours and hours and hours of tapes, and he was like something like 40% of the people were just let in by Capitol Police. But they don't talk about any of that. And you have SWAT teams showing up in California at somebody's house, trying to rouse them out of the house for walking around taking selfies inside that Capitol. It isn't right, Congressman. Or how about the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol? I mean, look, you're right. We Republicans have been, conservatives have been consistent. We condemned the violence that took place on January 6th, and we condemned all of it that took place all last summer with all these, uh, in all these metropolitan areas around our, around our great country. The Democrats are the ones who have been hip hypocrites on this. They did that. Last summer was fine. That was a righteous cause. But then they focused on, on January 6th. But the couple in Alaska who weren't even in the Capitol, the FBI kicks in their door, holds them at gunpoint, handcuffs them, interrogates them for four hours. They got the wrong couple. And then they take their phones, their laptop, and their pocket-sized copy of the Constitution. Talk about, I mean, th th there's got to be irony in that, that, that fact alone. So, yeah, th where's the consistency that we would like from everyone? We've been consistent. I wish the Democrats would do the same. Yeah. Well, there's my pocket constitution. I carry it with me all over the place. <laughs> and I'm in Texas, Congressman. Come and take it. Usually we're talking about guns. This time I'm talking about my constitution. In the FBI's view, the top domestic violent extremist threat comes from racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, specifically those who advocate for the superiority of the white race. Garland did not provide any numbers or statistics to back up this claim, but pointed to past racially motivated shootings and attacks, as well as the January 6th riot on Capitol Hill. Noticeably, Garland spent his entire 26-minute speech without even mentioning the summer of riots one time, simply ignoring months of attacks on police and federal buildings and cities all across this country as if it just didn't happen. Steve, I think this shows how politicized Biden's DOJ has really become ignoring vi radical violent groups like Antifa, like BLM, simply because they support the left-wing agenda. Yeah, unfortunately, it's another example of two sets of rules or two sets of narratives, really, in a way. And the narrative being spread here, of course, is that January 6th is, uh, was a, a riot that somehow endangered the American Republic, which is not in any sense true. It was an unarmed riot, inexcusable for, to be sure, but unarmed. No, not one person has been charged with having a firearm inside the Capitol that day, and it lasted a few hours. To try to compare that to weeks of rage and carnage up, across the summer last year in 2020 um, is just totally ludicrous and illogical. Unfortunately, that's right where Merrick Garland went.
they're essentially pitting Americans against one another by labeling it via basically a race war, which is essentially what they're implying with that statement. I don't agree with it. I think it's absolutely horrifying to see that you have the DOG, DOJ essentially being weaponized against the American people. There was, a, there was a rally in Chicago of white supremacists on January 25th, and they put out a national call and they got 80 people to show up in Chicago. And according to one expert, five people were from the Chicago area. Out of about, what, eight or nine million people who live in Chicago, there were five people, right? And so a lot of this uh, the southern, the, relies on the Southern Poverty Law Center and the statistics that they put out and the media regurgitate that. And so I think we have to be careful. Certainly, I, I do not trust the media uh, on this issue because they, they have proven themselves to be uh, you know, not reliable when it comes to being partisan and pushing certain narratives. So um, is white supremacy... Is there some in the United States? Absolutely. Is it the most uh, biggest threat to, to America? I think that's overblown. And I think that the administration is pushing it for their own political reasons. You know, it seems to me that race relations in America in recent decades have improved so dramatically that things like, for example, interracial marriages are totally unremarkable in America today. Uh, and it is not considered acceptable in polite society at all to have racist views. And yet we have people like Garland and Joe Biden who want to insist that the country is systemically racist. Are they essentially protesting a struggle that has already been won in American culture? You know, there has been tremendous progress in this country. And, and for a lot of folks uh, on the left to, to, as they're saying now, this is, you know, voting rights, it's Jim Crow 2.0, that there's been no progress made since the 1960s or even the 1860s. I mean, that is, most Americans understand that's ludicrous. I mean, that is gaslighting, right? That is an absolute gaslighting right. of the American people. And so I think, uh, again, in our normal everyday lives, we do not see the bogeymen that are being made out. There are not Klansmen walking around the corner. There are not white supremacists uh, gathering on street corners. And so I think, uh, you know, that ultimately falls flat to the American people because that's not what we see and we live in our day to day lives. Right. And we understand that racism is really, uh, you know, has has been a thing of the past. I mean, does it still exist today? Sure, it does in certain areas. But is the is the country systemically racist and oppressive? I don't think most people believe that.